thanks again for stopping by to my channel today. Today's video is going to be yet another sign tutorial and I'm saying another because if you haven't checked out my last video, I did a reverse canvas tutorial and I loved it so much. I'm recommending it to you guys now. So if you haven't checked out that video, the card will be right here and I will also put the link down below to watch that video. Today's video, like I said, is going to be another sign tutorial and it is a part of my engagement decor actually and I did mention to you guys that I'm going to be posting some videos on that and I'm so happy how this sign turned out. Out, it is a welcome wood sign. So fun fact about me, when I first started my business, I actually did make wood signs and I got a bunch of random planks and wood from my fiance's uncle's business, just a lot of scraps and I sanded them and I did everything I could, but making wood signs can be a lot of work. I don't have the correct area to make everything. Sanding and staining in a three season room, it travels into the house and it's just a huge mess. That's why I stopped my wood signs, but I really wanted to make a rustic wood sign for my engagement party because that is the theme that will be all throughout my engagement and bridal shower and wedding. So I am super excited to start this tutorial, but before I do, you guys know what to do, of course. If you love my videos and if you liked this tutorial today, please do not forget to give it a thumbs up and click my subscribe button to see more of my content because I just love creating all these Cricut DIY content ideas for you guys, whether it's you want to make this for you personal, for your engagement decor, for your wedding, or if you want to make this a future product and you want to sell it by all means these are what my projects on my youtube channel are for all right so let's stop talking and let's get into the video okay so here is the board that i used i got it from home depot as you can see from the picture and it was a two by four and i just had them cut it there to two by three now i'm just placing down a garbage bag and the wood sign so it doesn't get too dirty on the table even though you'll see later that i completely ruined the table this is my sander i got from walmart but i will link amazon on below and I'm using some coarse sandpaper and then some fine sandpaper and then these glasses that were literally a dollar to protect my eyes. Now, when you're sanding, the main thing that you want to do is you want to go along the grain. So you see I'm going left and right horizontally. The only time that I do go vertically is when I'm doing the sides because that's where they did cut it and it was a little choppy over there. So then I just flip over the board again and I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to sand from left to right. And then I'm lifting the board and I'm doing the sides. This is really important because the sides do get very rough. I'm changing the sandpaper from the coarse to the fine grit. This just makes it a smoother finish and will make it much easier to paint later on. So again, I'm just speeding this part up and I'm sanding the wood sign again. Just to remove all the dust, I took a dry paper towel and I wiped it all off and then I went in with a wet paper towel just to get the rest of it off. We will take some gloves, a paintbrush, and my favorite Minwax Dark Walnut Stain. Usually when I stain, I do use a paper towel or a cloth, like an old t-shirt, but this time I wanted to use a brush. So what I'm doing is I'm dipping the paintbrush into the stain and then wiping it off with a paper towel just so it's not super thick. And then I repeat this process, so I'm going to speed this part up. <laughs>
Once it's all done, we can let it dry overnight and then I will proceed to the design part. Let's open up Cricut Design Space as usual and here is my template. So I'm not gonna show you guys how I did the welcome part just because I do explain this step in a lot of my videos. So if you want to look at some of my past videos, please go ahead because it's simply me just typing the word and clicking the font. I'm going to change this to black just so y'all can see a little bit better and I'm going to show you how I did the bottom half. Also, if you want to know how I added the swashes to the font, please watch my swash video, which I will insert the card right here for because a lot of people do like the swashes on the welcome signs. For this part, I entered the text. I did our names, Alex and Amy, and then the date of our engagement party. <laughs> So once I typed it out, I changed the font to Evanier next, I think it's called Avenir. I have no idea how to say it, but that's what it is. It is a part of everyone's computer. And then I aligned it into the middle. I added the letter spacing to have that nice lettered space effect. And then I minimized it to the size that I want. You can also adjust the line spacing, which is the spacing between Alex and Amy and the date. So I just deleted it. And as usual, I always make a template just to see how I want to align everything. I entered the dimensions in inches, which again, Again, this is a two by three. So I am going to add these to the front so y'all can see. I left a little bit more room up top because I am going to be adding flowers up there and on the side a little bit. But you'll see that the welcome part is much longer than what the longer Cricut mat offers. I think you can only be up to 23.4, I wanna say, inches. So this is my trick, um, how to use your slice tool, especially when you have a longer design. I'm going to take a square or any, a, any shape will work, but a square works best in this situation. And I'm going to make this square the, basically the size of how long I can make it. So probably 23 point, I think I make it like 23.2, 23.4, like around there. So I'm just going to adjust it until I find the right measurement. Once where I like where it is, I'm going to hide the template, highlight both the welcome and the square, and then I'm going to slice. And this will not work unless the welcome is welded, so make sure it is welded. And now you can see the E easily detaches from the welcome. So you'll just have to cut this separately, so let's add it to the mat. I am using removable Cricut vinyl in this case because if I used Oracle 651 vinyl in the past, I've noticed that since it's such a permanent harsh vinyl, it will bring up a lot of the wood and it's very messy when it comes to that. Let's insert the vinyl to the Cricut and let it cut everything. And then once we're done, I'm going to flip the mat over and remove it this way so there are no bubbles. It's really important that you get zero bubbles in this because we are using this as a stencil. You can't see because I did block half of it, I'm so sorry, but you are going to be weeding the letters. So not the inside, you can see right here, I'm weeding the E, the L, and then the C. You're weeding that part because you're going to be painting this. It's up to you guys if you want to paint it. If you did want to just use the vinyl onto the wood, then you would not have to do that. But since we are painting this, this is the exact method I also use for my doormats. So now the little E, I'm just taping it and aligning it to the end of the M. So it's easier for me to attach the transfer tape. And I attach two pieces, little pieces right there. And I also attach a piece to the back. I attached the transfer tape off camera and I'm just cutting the excess off. I'm flipping this over and then I'm cutting the other part where it says Alex and Amy and the date. I also measured this off camera and what I did which helped tremendously was take a piece of chalk and just mark each corner where I exactly wanted to put the vinyl on. Um, this just helps so much because sometimes when you are transferring it can move and shift a little bit. It just made it much easier. So 
So I did the welcome off camera because I want to make sure my method would work and it did. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you for the bottom part. I taped the ends of the second half. I scraped it one last time and then what I did was I removed the backing carefully and slowly. And then once I had just enough of the sticky part showing, I aligned it to where the ends of the chalk were and I scraped that down. And you're going to repeat this process very slowly. Like you can see here, the C was kind of pulling up a bit. So as long as you just scrape it a little bit and you keep slowly removing the backing, you will be set. I didn't want to speed the first half of this part up because I wanted you guys to see this in real time, how slow I was going. So just carefully take your time, slowly move it. See the B was coming up again. So you just push it back a little, scrape it down a little bit, and then it was perfect and it was slowly coming off. And as you can see, the tape really helps keep it down on the end because like I said, it can move it and then make it completely misaligned. And I was so stressed and I wanted to make sure that this whole sign was perfectly straight and just at the measurements that I wanted it to be. So here I'm speeding it up. And then once I am done, I do a nice scrape one last time and I remove the transfer tape. Again, I cannot stress enough that you do not want to have bubbles. If you have some bubbles on the vinyl, the paint will bleed much easier and you don't want that. So I just removed the transfer tape for the welcome as well. And I scraped everything down again once more. Now we're going to use frog tape and tape the extra sides where I think the paint might leak a little. I'm using a thicker sponge to paint so and I don't want the outside of the vinyl stencil to have paint all over it like a border so it just makes it easier so the paint just doesn't get on the wood. And I didn't do the whole area, I just did the parts that I was really worried about. Now we can take some Mod Podge or I have polyacrylic and this is a secret step that you guys must follow if you are painting wood signs. You want to take a little paintbrush and put Mod Podge or like I said polyacrylic all in the letters and the reason why I say this is because it will help minimize the bleeding of the paint so much when I did my first wood sign I did not do the Mod Podge and I freaked out because my entire stencil was ruined I bled through the whole thing and it was just awful take a plague and some white acrylic paint. I do like chalkboard paint but acrylic paint works just as well and this makeup sponge I got like a 50 pack at the Dollar Tree for like a dollar. This step is super important as well guys. Make sure that the paint that you are lightly dabbing this onto the stencil you do not want to do a thick coat because the thicker it will go the more it will bleed. You have to be very gentle with this. Like you'll see I dip the paint a little and then I also dip the excess on the outside of the plate as well so it's a light layer and you can see it's not as white as the vinyl and that's why I use white vinyl because then I can see how white it truly is so I ended up doing about three coats this is the second coat and then I did the third coat off camera but just take your time with it and make sure the paint does dry a little bit in between each coat and then once it is done, you can remove the vinyl. And this is my favorite part because it's just so pleasing. Again, take your time with this. And I was kind of worried because I didn't know how much of the wood would come up and it barely came up, which I was very happy about since we did use removable vinyl. And in the case that if there's a lot of wood that comes up, you want to remove it vertically. So see how I'm removing it from left to right or right to left, you want to do it from top to bottom instead. And then I'm just taking my weed tool and I'm weeding the inside of the letters. And you can't see on camera, but up close there were some little areas that bled a little, so I just dipped this tiny paintbrush into the stain that I had and I touched it up. And then I used the extra of the makeup brush just to blend it in easily. It was very few areas that got messed up, but as you can see, like it looks perfect from this angle, but when you look at it up close, there were some areas that just bled slightly and I wanted to make sure that this sign was absolutely perfect. Blended everything in and then I went in with more of the white paint just because 
some of the stain actually bled onto the color. And once you're done with that, you can let it dry overnight and apply some polyacrylic to it. Alright, thanks guys so much for watching this video. I hope you all loved it as much as I did. I cannot wait to set this up this coming week. So my party is going to be my party. It's our party, our engagement. Um, our engagement party is going to be this upcoming weekend and I am so excited. My next video is going to be a vlog of the upcoming week that I have with all of the decor and planning and prep and whatnot. And my busy week ahead of me so and I did post that on Instagram and everyone wanted me to do a vlog so you're getting what you asked for make sure if you want to see that video don't forget to subscribe and turn on those bell notifications so you get notified each time when I post a video I hope everyone has a great rest of their day and I will see everyone in the next video bye